Okay, so over the last few months, we've looked at a bunch of different OCR models. We've looked at things like the Llama OCR, the Ohm OCR, etc. And most of those models at the time I was saying were pretty amazing because maybe like I think Llama OCR was around 11B. One of them was like 8B and stuff like that. And it was really amazing that you could get good OCR results out of these vision language models. Well, today what I want to look at is a model that just came out recently called NanoNets OCR Small. And my guess is maybe they're going to make a bigger one as well. But even for this, it takes the small to a whole new level. So we're looking at basically a 3B model. And actually the base model that they've used for this is the Quen 2.5 VL model. And so we know that Quen has made a bunch of good vision language models in the past. They've had some really big ones. They've had some medium ones and obviously a small one. Now they themselves haven't done a OCR model out of the box. But the cool thing is when they're basically releasing these models as open weights, that allows other people like NanoNets to come in and actually make their own OCR model here. And that brings us to this release. So this release, I think, reinforces a trend that we're seeing where we've got specialist companies being able to take one of these open weights models and fine-tune it for some very specific uses. And in this case, NanoNets have basically fine-tuned it for OCR tasks, but where other people have just perhaps focused, as they put it, on mainly focusing on plain text from images. Here, they've focused on adding a whole bunch of different tasks that a lot of the other OCR models just aren't supporting. Now, we see these six key features and capabilities listed out here. So the first one being LaTeX equation recognition, the second one being intelligent image description, third one, signature detection, fourth one, watermark extraction, fifth one, smart checkbox handling, and then the last one, table extraction. So these are features that other OCR models perhaps have had to some degree, but they haven't been the strong point of that model. And what we're seeing now is that as companies are starting to roll their own versions of these OCR models, they're going to have different use cases. And some people are going to have the use case of doing watermark extraction or of being able to handle tables really well. And in the past, we saw big companies like Google and stuff like that release specialist models for this kind of thing. Now all of these things are being fine-tuned into standard VLM models like we're seeing with the Quen 2.5 3B model here. So coming in here and looking at it, they've chosen to compare themselves to Mistral. And so with each of the examples, they point out perhaps where Mistral is not doing a great job for some of these. And we can see the input where we've got the latex there. And we can see for their one, they're able to extract it out. And sure enough, if we come in here and look at it, we can see the LaTeX in there. Now, now I feel with these kind of models, this is really all coming down to the data set and the curation of that data set for these particular tasks. So they mention here in their training details that they basically created a data set of 250,000 pages. And those have been chosen very specifically to represent research papers, financial documents, legal documents, healthcare, tax forms, receipts, and invoices. And it seems that they've enhanced those specifically for things that have tables in them, equations, signatures, watermarks, those kind of things. And sure enough, this has allowed them to basically get pretty good results on these specific kinds of documents. So I'm certainly not saying that this is the best OCR system out there. I don't even see any sort of benchmarks and stuff in here. What I think is the key takeaway for this is this is a tiny model that literally is small enough that you could almost run it on a phone nowadays. And yet it's able to do not only basic OCR, it's able to do a whole bunch of these specialty tasks. And I feel that we're starting to see the era of with these OCR models of where either you go really big and you go for something like a Gemini model to do your OCR or something like that, or you go for something highly customized to your specific use case. And that's what NanoNets seem to have done. So you can see here that we've got these diagrams here. And what Mistral OCR does is extract those out and leave those as images so that you could pass them into another model. But as they point out, unless you're going to be using some sort of secondary model, that's not going to work great in your RAG system to just have a image number in there. 
So what they're actually doing is getting something out where they can actually embed a description of the image. The same thing being true for the signature detection, which to be honest, I'm amazed because I don't think I could even read that signature yet. They're able to show here that that actually says J Walker. I guess carefully, once you know what you're looking for, that does pretty well with that signature. I don't think this would just work for general handwriting. You would definitely try it out and see. But again, what they're saying is that the Mistral model would basically just give you an image of that. Now, that doesn't mean that the Mistral way of doing it is necessarily bad. You may actually want to keep those images and use them for different things for something like a multimodal rag or passing it to another model, which will actually do the description of those images. But if you want something just quickly that will basically get you this kind of output, this model can do that. Again, for watermark detection, you can see the big paid in there. So I was very curious, okay, the paid is right across that. Where does it put that out? And you can see that, okay, it actually signifies that it's a watermark and we can see it there. The cool thing is we could actually then filter this for the watermarks and just extract them out and put them at the bottom of the page or the top of the page or something like that if we wanted to do that. And as they point out in this case that the Mistral would actually miss the watermark completely. Which again, in some cases, may be actually what you want. You don't really care about those watermarks. Next up, they've got some things where they're doing smart checkbox handling. And probably the one that I think is most interesting is the whole idea of complex table extraction. So tables like this can be an absolute pain to extract from OCR things. A lot of models will fall into different pitfalls with this kind of thing. But here we can see that they're able to extract these out it's giving it to us in this nice sort of HTML layout, which you could basically use and even put that into a RAG model. LLMs are getting pretty good at being able to understand this and to be able to align things up so that if you ask questions about the actual table, you will be able to get results out here. So the one thing that I would have loved to seen with this is them actually release the data set. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's the case. They mentioned that the data set is both synthetically generated and manually annotated data sets. We don't know how big the splits are there. That would also be interesting information to know. Like I said earlier on, you should probably shouldn't expect that this is going to be very good on handwritten text. While it can do perhaps the signatures, it's not trained for handwritten text. Now, my guess is that they're perhaps working on a bigger version, which will be a proprietary model, but currently the model is up on Hugging Face. So let's jump into the code, have a play with this, see how you can actually set this all up. And you can do it with a T4 GPU, which is available on the free tier of Google Colab. Okay, so jumping into the code, it's pretty simple to basically get this started. You'll see here that I'm using a T4 GPU and we can load this up. The flash attention, I think will have some issues with the T4 but we'll work with some of the more modern GPUs in there. I've just basically brought in some documents for testing. We've got just a really simple function that they put up there for being able to run these things through and try them out. And you can see that just taking this and running things through, it gets pretty good results, not only on just the standard text, but also even on different kinds of markings and stuff like that in here which allows you to just take those, put those into a RAG system very quickly, or even to extract information out, things like the emails and stuff like that. One of the things I was impressed with is if you look at these names here, where that they're not English names, so they've got markings like umlas and stuff like that above the letters, it seems to do actually a very good job at being able to get these. Now, I'm not sure if they've actually done any training on this, and especially these ones, I don't think they've done a huge amount of multilingual sort of training, and I'm certainly not the person to be able to comment on the quality of this. Not a great image to put in there in the first place, but looking at the multilingual stuff, it does seem to be able to get it. So the Japanese, it seems to be able to do a decent job, at least for me, looking at the title and stuff like that. And the thing I would say here is that this is probably not coming from their fine tuning of the model. This is more from the actual base model, but I could be wrong if they have done the sort of multilingual fine tuning. One of the ones that I was curious to see was let's take a sort of profit and loss statement and just see, okay, how does it handle that? And I haven't gone through and checked every number, so it could be off on some of them, 
But on most of them, it seems to do a pretty good job. Now, here we can see that the dollar sign really applies to all of these. And what they do here is, I guess they've got a sort of space between it. But they've got each of the sections in the tables, which look pretty good for doing this. Now, I'm not sure how you actually get it to give the HTML out, like we saw in some of the outputs. You probably have to go in there and have a play with that. But it should be pretty simple then to write something that just takes this and converts it to the HTML formatting and stuff as well. So overall, I'm certainly not claiming that this is the best OCR system out there. Like I talked about before, this is like something that you could use on-prem, set up quite simply. You could do it with a pretty small retail GPU. You don't need like a rack of A100s or anything like this to run it, or even a single A100 to run it. And playing around with it, it seems like you could use this for a document extraction system, which you could have fully private to you and your organization without having to upload your data or share your data anywhere. And I think that is the key power of this open weights model. And it's just great to see that we're getting really good quality coming out of smaller and smaller models as we go through this. And I think that's really a testament to both NanoNets for doing the fine tuning of this, but also for Quen for actually making a very solid VLM, even when it's a tiny VLM. And then making that model have open weights so that people could use it for these kind of fine tunes and repurpose it for these kind of things. You got to think that these 2.5 models now are starting to get a little bit older. It's probably not that long before we see the 3.0 models for these coming out. And that's probably going to give us yet another bump in the performance here. So I would not be surprised in a month or two if we're looking at an OCR system that is built off the 0.6 B model. So maybe with the vision encoder and everything, you're looking at something possibly even half the size of this. So one of the things I would say is always be thinking, okay, six months from now, what will I be able to do when this is half the size and I can run it twice as quickly and start to think about planning for those kind of things now, because this is definitely a theme that I'm seeing more and more. And there are a couple of things I'm going to talk about in a couple of future videos that are built around this whole sort of latency coming down, costs coming down, being able to just throw lots of data at these kind of models, whether they're open models or whether they're proprietary models. So anyway, let me know in the comments what worked well for you, what didn't work well. Like I said, I'm not sure for the multilingual stuff how well it's actually going to work. You should definitely test that out. I'd be curious for the people, anyone who can read Arabic, please tell me how did it do from what you can see in the collab. And like I said, as far as I know, they're not claiming for this to be a multilingual system. It's just that when you've got such a good base model, it seems to be able to do quite well at these kinds of things. All right, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.